Welcome rugby coaches, this is Rugby Basics bringing you a video about everything you need to know about the ruck. So the whole purpose of a ruck is to allow players to compete for the ball which is on the ground. Which then brings us to when a ruck is formed. So a ruck can take place only in the field of play. A ruck is formed when at least one player from each team are in contact on their feet and over the ball which is on the ground. Also players involved in all stages of the ruck must have their heads and shoulders no lower than their head, hips. Otherwise, the ref will stop the game and penalize your team. Each team has an offside line that runs parallel to the goal line through the hitmost point of any ruck participant. If that point is on or behind the goal line, the offside line for that team is the goal line. So before we get to the part on how you can join a ruck or just joining a ruck in general, you first have to understand how you can enter a ruck. So if you are the attacking side, which would be team B, and you want to enter the ruck, you're only allowed to enter from this side because um, you are playing from right to left. And you are only allowed to enter through the gate. So normally you would uh, hear rugby coaches tell their players that you, had, you didn't come through the gate or uh, you, you came from the side or from the complete opposite side. So you are only allowed to enter from the side of the gate, which would be right here. Then also representing uh, this, this part of the fence would re represent the offside line for the uh, defending team, also referred to as the last man's feet. Crossing this line would mean that you are in an offside position and the referee will stop the game and penalize you for, an, for being offside. And then also, just as the attacking team has to enter through the gates, the defending team also have to go through the gates if they want to uh, um, prevent the, uh, go for the steal or uh, counter ruck. They must also come through the gates. So now we know where or which side each team has to come through. So the attacking side has to come from this side and the defending team has to come through this side of the ruck. And also where the, the, the offside line is for the defending line and why they should not cross this line. So moving on to joining the ruck, a few things we have to look at and a few laws that you need to take in account. So if you want to join the ruck, just remember that any arriving player must be on their feet and join from behind their offside line. So the first thing this Spaniard player is, is doing wrong or will be doing wrong is that she enters from the side and as she goes over, she places crummy that you're not allowed to do and she did not support her own body weight. Put on her back no, no! Garcia. And the counter rock, but that was and illegal. And from the side and it's against the captain, Gonzalez. So. Another example here, look at the number 12 of the Scotland team. As he enters from the side, yet again, you're not allowed to do this. You have to come through the gates from this side. Look how he enters from the side. And again, this is a penalty. The ref stops the game. And Scotland was penalised. Forwards were well standing waiting. Now the counter ruck. They could get a penalty. Another rucking law states that a player may join alongside, but not in front of the headmost player. So this guy. But the only problem is he went from the side. So he had he had to come from behind this player in order to play the ball. And now the counter ruck comes in from England. It's a good one, and they'll get the rewards for it as well. Well, Harry Randall's a lucky young man there. He so in this video, we just have a Uruguayan player that enters the ruck from the side. But another law states that a player must bind onto a teammate or an opposition player. The bind must precede or be simultaneous with contact with any other part of the body. Also, player mu players must join the ruck or retire behind their offside line immediately. So players who have previously been a part of the ruck may rejoin the ruck provided that they do so from an onside position. So if this Ireland player, the left wing or the number 11 of Ireland, wants to play the ball, he has to go around and enters from, an, from his offside line. So he has to enter through the gate. If he's going to play the ball from this position, the ref will penalize him for being offside. Hermes. Push to the floor. He goes trying to keep the ball alive, but the offside line is breached. 
So during a ruck, possession may be won either by rucking or by pushing the opposition team off the ball. So watch closely at the following videos how the, the defending team uh, pushes the attacking team over the ruck and by winning position. Brittany Waters out of BC. Kind of ruck is good from New Zealand. Tackle! Counter-Ruck's good! Once a ruck has formed, no player may handle the ball unless they were able to get their hands on the ball before the ruck form and stay on their feet. So there's a saying in rugby, um, you're only allowed to take one bite at the cherry. The Georgian player made an attempt to steal the ball and he missed it and he went again and were penalized for making a second stealing attempt. A little bit interesting in the last 10 minutes. Players must also endeavor to remain on their feet throughout the ruck. So make sure you stay on your feet, uh, especially when uh, the pressure comes from the defense to try and push you guys over the ball. Rucking and Wales now have the penalty in South Africa. The ball back quickly, it's hands in there. Oh, straight in and down to ground. There's the penalty against that's a bit. Got to stay on your feet. Also, all players in the ruck must be caught in or bound to it and not just alongside it. Players may play the ball with their feet provided they do so in a safe manner. Players on the ground must attempt to move away from the ball and must not play the ball in the ruck or as it emerges. Look closely at this Georgian player as he puts his foot in front of the ball while he's on the ground and prevents the ball from getting passed. The result was a penalty against the Georgian team. Use it! And then before we get to the last part of this video of ending the ruck, players must not pick the ball up with their legs, intentionally collapse a ruck or jump on top of it, intentionally step on another player, fall over the ball as it is coming out of the ruck and kick or attempt to kick the ball out of the ruck. All of this will, the result will be a penalty and then also uh, players are not allowed to return the ball into the ruck or take any action to make opponents believe that the ruck has ended when it has not. Uh, the result of this will be a free kick against your team. So ending the ruck, when the ball has been clearly won by a team at the ruck and is available to be played, the referee calls use it, after which the ball must be played away from the ruck within five seconds. Use it! If you play the ball within five seconds, the ref will stop the game and award a scrum to the other team. Washington is there. Nice run. Out. Set back. Use it! There for Takui. Having to do the dog to dig that one out though. Slow ball. Yamamoto waiting to step up. Use it! Say use it. Hey. Use it, five seconds. Strong. Also the ruck ends and play continues when the ball leaves the ruck or when the ball in the ruck is on or over the goal line. The ruck will end when the ball becomes unplayable. If the referee decides that the ball will probably not emerge within a reasonable time, a scrum is awarded. Should work its way back to Gareth Davis. Ball trap, tackle going up forward. Up there. He wants the ball. Ball trap, don't hear it. It's just a scrum for Wales. For Good pressure by Wales. The skill level of Sanchez to get away from the first attempt to tackle. And another turnover that one. It was coming back to the referee. Oh, they turned the ball to Austria.
my hand, I don't wanna talk.